Hey, what's up everyone? Ronald P. Tucker here, and it's been a while since I created uh, any type of video for creating comic books with Procreate and any tips for doing that. And so today's video is all about that. Five easy tips for creating your comic books in Procreate. Now these, like I said, are easy, so you might know about them, you might not have, but in case you don't, I figured I would uh, share some with you and uh, make your comic book making a little bit easier. So what do we got first? is we got flip your image. This is kind of a uh, old trick of the trade where you, you draw something and then you turn it around and you look at it from the back, like through the light uh, in your room or whatever. And you can see any type of imperfections um, or any, any type of things you might have uh, misaligned or anything like that. And it's pretty simple. All you would do is on your layer, you would just draw your image, right? I'm going to uh, make it a little obvious for uh, video purposes, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about in a second here. You're just gonna draw your image. The easiest way to do that is you hit your quick menu over here and you should have flip horizontal here. Now, if you don't have it right here, uh, you can actually hold one of these buttons down and then you get a menu that pops up. Just look for it there and you can add it to your menu. Uh, that's another little quick tip. Here's like, oh, a bonus six tip right here. In case you don't have that there, you can hit the middle min middle button, quick menu button, and you can actually add a second quick menu and customize all these. But anyways, back to this one, flip horizontal, and now you see, okay, it's kind of off there, so you would adjust the eyes. And this is what I do sometimes. I just draw, um, draw reverse. And sometimes you might have to uh, keep track of which side is actually the way you're, you're drawing. But yeah, you would just re readjust it. I'm doing this really quick, really simple. But, you know, just readjust it here so you can see exactly. And then when you flip it back to the normal side, you can see it's a little bit more realigned. Very sloppy, very messy, but just a quick tutorial on, you know, flipping your image. All of this is in that quick menu right there. Okay, quick tip number two panel borders. Now I've gone over this in a previous video, but I'll just quickly go over it here. It's super easy. You know, the easy, the easiest way uh, to do panel borders, obviously, take this one off here real quick. On your layer, you just hold down your line, hold it straight, and there you go. Make straight panel borders like that, and then you could just, you know, erase there. In my previous video though, what I've done is you can use any type of template that you have. Then you go up here, go to Canvas, Drawing Guide, Edit Drawing Guide, and here you got all these different options here. Step, stay on the two grid, and it really depends on the size of a uh, gutter you want between your panels. I like to usually have it around 60 pixels. So I'll have it 60, done. And now, on this uh, layer here, tap it, do drawing assist and when you have it on drawing assist it's going to stay on your drawing guides you can't go off of it so basically you would just draw your guides there and it really like i said depends on your preference on how thick you want those gutters between the panels and don't worry you don't have to just make boxes obviously we are on uh the drawing guide for 2d grid but like i said Go to there, and you can have an isometric one. And then that way, if you want a straight panel uh, lines, but you want them certainly in certain styles, you can do that. And actually, this is a great way of uh, trying to do perspective for buildings as well. So very, very easy tip, very simple to do your comic book panel borders. Okay, tip number three is using brush stamps. Now, first of all, you might be saying using brush stamps, what kind of tip is that? Because all you're doing is using a stamp and then you go, well, yeah, you can do it that way. But the way I use brush stamps sometimes, let's go to here. I got Monero uh, sound effects. Uh, how do you say his name? Atai Monero, something like that. He's on YouTube. He does a lot of different um, Procreate brushes. I bought this one off of him and he has all these different sound effects, right? So you could just do that, use that sound effect there. Let's do a new uh, layer. Make this pretty big. Boom, right? So you have that. But sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a stamp, lower the opacity on it, then I'll put a layer over the top. And now it kind of has the shape I want, but maybe I want both of these uh, circles, both of these O's small. 
So I'll kind of, whoops, let's go to back to my normal brush here. So I would create the B and then I would just do the small O and then the small O and then I would have the B, the M at the end, right? Very rushed, very simple and messy right here, but you get my point. You can use the stamp that you're using uh, and then modify it to how, to make it look however you want it to look. And the same thing goes for any other type of stamps that you have. So I have a Manga Studio um, stamp, a bunch of them here from a different artist I bought. And say we have like stars. Let's do these stars here. So you have that. And you could do this all around your your uh, layer, lower the opacity. And maybe you want to use those uh, stars, but you want to add some a little bit different flair to it. Or maybe you don't want them as straight as they're showing uh, in the stamp. They're super straight lines. Maybe you just want a little, let's go to a new layer here. Maybe you just want a little squiggle there, right? For whatever reason, maybe it's a, a falling star, a dying star, something like that. Or maybe it's just scribbles. You're making like a little notebook doodle or something like that in your in your comic. And that's all you would have to do. So you can really use the stamps just as they are, as they're intended, as a little side effects, sound effects, any type of thing you want for your book. Or you can use them as bases and templates for creating something else. Okay, the fourth tip for using Procreate when creating your comic books. Uh, alpha lock your layers when you are coloring. So I'm not the best colorist. I do color my own books just, you know, out of necessity. But a nice easy tip when you are coloring is to alpha lock them. And what alpha locking does is, well, make sure you can only write to draw or color on whatever layer is alpha locked. Um, or whatever is on that alpha locked layer, I should say. So what I mean by that is I'm going to open this up. I have these circles here. And now you have these, right? So if you go here, you tap the layer, you do alpha lock. So now I don't know if you can really tell in the camera, but this has a little checkered behind the circles and the little icon here. What that means is I can't color anything outside of these circles. It's only going to mark these circles. And this really comes in handy when you're trying to do, I use it when I'm trying to do shades and highlights. So let's say I have my blue color here. I'm going to go to a soft airbrush. And say I want to just put a soft, make that a little smaller, sm little soft, uh, you know, gradient on these like that. You can do something like that. And then you just have, and you're not getting it all over on the side. You're only getting it on whatever is on this this layer because it's been locked. And then you can, and, or if you wanted to add stripes on it, let's do a dark color here. Whoops. Go to that and you just do stripes. And it's only going to be on that. Whatever is on that layer that you've alpha locked, it's only going to mark on those layers or on those uh, images. So yeah, very easy, very useful tip for when you're doing coloring is what I mainly use it for. Okay, and my last tip for using Procreate when creating comic books is creating a custom color palette. So now let's say I'm going to have this image popped up right here. And let's say you're coloring your book, you're drawing your book, and you are you have different colors throughout the different page of the characters, of the background, foreground, trees, animals, whatever you got, right? And you have these custom, custom colors that you've chosen for your characters and for everything about uh, your book. And instead of always having to copy and paste uh, from each side, which you can do once you're on on one page and it's very easy. You just, you know, hold your finger down and go, okay, I need that color. Okay, I need that color again. But what happens when you're creating a comic book and you're on page five, you're on page 10, you're on page 20. If you have each uh, blank page there and you have to keep copying and pasting over onto it, your new pages, yeah, you can do it. But to save yourself some time, quick, easy tip is to create a custom color palette. And basically all you would do is tap your color icon, go down to your palettes, and now you have all the different palettes that I've that have come with it and that I've created here, right? So if you want to create a new one, just go up to the little plus icon up here, tap it, create a new palette, and you can rename it if you want. Let's do just do custom, done. All right, so now I like to use this classic layout. So now you don't have any more colors right here. But depending on which one you choose, I want yellow here. I need this. 
And obviously you have to remember what these colors are for. But you have them all right there in your custom color palette ready for you to use no matter what page you are drawing and coloring. And you can create, it has a whole bunch of other ones. I can't remember how many, but there's a lot here. And then also if you run out of room or you decide you don't want any color, all you would have to do is change, is to hold down that color. Say you wanted this purple gone, hold your finger down, whoops. Uh, hold your finger or the pencil down there, delete swatch, and you just delete it. Let's say you wanted to change one. So let's go back to here, tap that there, and let's go to this color. Let's do a different, that one. And we wanted to change that color, the red to that new color there. Tap that, and then either delete swatch or set current color, which is this muddy yellow. And then that changes to that. And there you go, creating a custom color uh, palette for your comic books. Okay, I hope you found this helpful and it made some type of sense. I know sometimes I go on rambling about things, but I really wanted to create this for anybody out there creating comic books with Procreate. And obviously, you know, these type of tips uh, don't have to just be used for comic books. They are easy tips uh, simple ones that you can use when you're creating any kind of artwork in Procreate. But this is a comic book channel. I'm a comic book creator. And you know what, with all the AI stuff going on out there, there's new. Uh, there's a new Google one called Gemini Storyteller, I believe, that people can just type in whatever they want to create their own story and, a, and an image pops out. All that stuff out there. So I'm really trying to double down on being authentic and having this stuff that, you know, that, that we create as creators and that we don't just spit out through a AI prompt. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like, hit that subscribe. Let me know in the comments, in the comments down below, if there are any other things that you want to know about creating comic books for uh, in Procreate or any other, you know, quick tips or any questions you have about Procreate. I, I you know, I'm not a super, uh, super genius about Procreate, but I know a few things here and there. And uh, so if you have any questions, I can do my best to try to answer them down below. Okay, like I said, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.